Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're going to take a look at Noctis, the Crown Prince of Lucis. He's our latest assassin character and he brings his patented weapon swap from Final Fantasy XV into Dissidia. His aerial and ground neutral attacks use his sword. His forward aerial and ground attacks use his lance, which gives those attacks a little extra reach. His backwards ground and aerial attacks use a great sword, which are a little slower, but give him a lot of range. And he uses his knives for his dash attack as a projectile on the ground and a short range combo in the air. Now the main thing that sets Noctis apart from other assassins is his ability to warp. His X skill allows him to throw his weapon and teleport to it every 35 seconds, and this gives him a lot of mobility and allows him to follow up a lot faster than people might expect. Even better, he can stack up to 3 charges of warp at a time, allowing Noctis to be really tricky with his movement and opening up a lot of different options. Use your warp to trick your opponents and cover a lot of distance in a really short time. Noctis' unique ability is Armager, and basically after dropping below 1500 HP, his attacks deal a small amount of additional damage. It's not very significant, so I wouldn't worry too much about it, but it is a nice little bonus when it triggers. Also, if you drop below 1500 HP and then are healed back up, you keep Armager. All of Noctis' HP attacks involve warping in some way, each using a different weapon and having somewhat different properties. So once again, they use his sword, knives, greatsword, and lance, and you can kind of expect what HP attack is good for just based off of the weapon. The sword attack is pretty basic, you know, kind of all around, but it's really strong. The lance attack works more as a jump and has a lot of range. The great sword attack is slower, but it has a pretty big AoE around it. And the knife attack is fast and less predictable. All good options, and it's important to think about what your team is already bringing in terms of HP attacks, or maybe what your composition lacks when choosing your own HP attack. Alright, so to get us started, we're going to follow a YouTuber named Hyphen, who does a really good job of showing off what Noctis can do. Let's check it out in this video here. Alright, so in our first matchup here, Noctis is going to be using that Warp Strike HP attack. Actually, I believe that's the one he's going to be using in all these videos. It's just a really quick attack that allows him to punish enemies who are out of position, or maybe a little too close, a little too far forward. So our blue team here is going to be Noctis, Bartz, and Golbez, going up against Warrior of Light, Terra, and Lightning. So red team is going to have a balanced team here, and the blue team is going to have Bartz as a specialist, so we're going to have to be the X-Factor in this match. So right off the bat, you can see Noctis use his first warp there, trying to connect with an attack on Warrior of Light, but not able to catch him. He's going to keep moving forward, though he is going to catch Warrior of Light with his dash aerial attack. Just a quick move there, able to pick up a little bit of damage. Tries to move in on Terra. He is going to catch her with his forward aerial attack, able to use that long reach, able to catch her from a distance. And now he's going to catch her with another attack, leading into an HP attack, and actually picking up a kill there on her very quickly. So nice job there, using his tools, using that um, aggression that Noctis can bring out at any time, picking up the first kill of the game. Summoning Stone's gonna spawn, so you see everyone kind of moving over towards it. As Warrior of Light recovers from an attack, you see Noctis use his warp to get above him, leading into another attack. So just kind of mixing up his approach there with Warrior of Light, making it difficult to know what Warrior of Light should actually do to get away from it. So nice job there. And now you see him going after Terra once again, throwing out an attack but not going to connect. And he's got his eyes on Warrior of Light right now, who's low on health. He's gonna throw out his warp strike there on Lightning, not going to connect. Gonna do it once again, but you see the two of them just kind of dodging around. Going to throw out a Bravery attack though on Warrior Bite this time, actually connecting with that. He moves over to Terra once again, breaking her Bravery and giving him quite a lot. And now the Summoning Stone spawned again, so you see everyone once again moving towards it. Looks like Golbez is going to pick up a kill on Warrior of Light, and you see Noctis move in on Terra as she was trying to help out. She was focusing elsewhere, and he's able to pick up some HP damage there on her. Now Blue Team is going to successfully summon here, they're going to get Shiva active, and you see Terra immediately gets hit by Shiva's attack. Noctis tries to follow up with it, but she was in her recovery frame, so not going to connect. You see him warping, trying to catch an attacker on Warrior of Light. He is going to wall rush him here, gonna throw out that warp strike, and almost finish off the game there, but Terra actually saves the day with a Meteor, knocking him away and interrupting his HP attack there. Now Noctis is moving in once again to Warrior of Light. It looked like Warrior of Light was focusing on someone else, so he immediately throws out that quick warp strike. Like I said, it's great for punishing enemies who are, you know, caught up in their movement or focusing elsewhere. Able to throw that out and finish this game off. So really great job there by the blue team. Using their aggression to kind of overcome the fact that the red team had a balance team. So they were able to just stay in their faces the entire time. It helped that this is a pretty small map. So that allowed the blue team to be more in your face. Make it more difficult for Terra to really get away. And to keep space away from Noctis so he couldn't, you know, warp around right into her face or anything like that. You'll see him using his spear attacks out of warp a lot of times because that gives him extra reach. That's his forward aerial and forward ground attacks. And it just kind of lunges forward, allows him to cover a lot of ground. And, you know, once again, like I said, if you warp kind of past somebody, maybe they expect you to warp beside them, you can go past them a little bit and then come in with that spear. I'm not sure if we saw that in this game, but we'll see that in future games. So just really a lot of great options here for Noctis. You see how powerful he can be whenever he can just run around the map, do what he wants. Kind of reminiscent of Titus and how if he can kind of 
get his game going where he's using his mobility, really tricking up the opposing team, he can do a ton of damage. All right, so match number two here, it's gonna be another quick one here by Hyphen, but just really showcases how great Noggus can be whenever he can be aggressive and whenever his team it really works well together. So we're going to have Noctis, Golbez, and Barks once again, and they are going to be going up against Onion Knight, Golbez, and Sephiroth. So I would say composition-wise, the red team maybe has a slight edge just because they have a vanguard to kind of help counteract the aggression, you would think. So let's see how it goes. Now, red team staying grouped up here. You see Noctis is trying to find a way in. He's actually going to warp right into the middle of the red team. Going to get punished for it as the blue team really isn't there to help him out at the time. So he gets knocked away. Trades an attack there with Onion Knight actually going to um, connect there, get his bravery back to a thousand, kind of back to that default state. As the red team starts to split up a little bit, you see him pick off Onion Knight who has moved over to the side, dealing a lot of damage to him. He's going to catch an attack there on Sephiroth as well, and now backing away as he has two people targeting him at the time. Looks like the Summoning Stone is going to spawn here, you see Noctis trying to find a way in, you see him kind of dashing in, jumping back, just trying to kind of mess with the red team here. He's going to catch an HP attack there on Onion Knight, dealing a lot of damage here. Sephiroth knocks him away, but is not able to follow up as Noctis gets his shield up in time. And you see him going for Onion Knight once again, gonna get a wall rush, but Golbez and Sephiroth are both going to contribute in knocking Noctis away, saving their teammate's life there. He's gonna use a warp, trying to catch Sephiroth there with that lance attack, but Sephiroth was too far away, wasn't quite able to catch him. You see Noctis kind of dodging around Golbez's HP attack there, and now he's backing up, moving towards his team so they can use some of their X-Goes together, just kind of buffing each other up. Now, Noctis is going to move in once again, going to catch Sephiroth with that forward aerial, turn immediately to Golbez and use an HP attack there, dealing a lot of damage to him. Now, Sephiroth had moved in, so he's going to actually catch him with an attack, break Sephiroth's bravery, and build his up quite a bit. As Sephiroth is attacking Barts, Noctis is going to warp strike in, pick up a kill there on him, and actually leave the red team with one health bar left. With Sephiroth down here, he's going to move over to Golbez, use his warp, lead into that forward aerial, and then kind of combo him there into the wall, leading into that warp strike, and picking up the last kill of the game. So Noctis is kind of making quick work of the red team here at the very end, as they started getting down in these 2v3 situations, because I believe right before Sephiroth was killed, um, Onion Knight had been killed right before that. So really just kind of putting them at a disadvantage throughout this, uh, whole ending sequence here, making it really difficult for the red team to recover, and with the blue team just keeping that aggression up, it just was a really great strategy there to kind of use their strengths and kind of leave the red team in a bad spot. So another really quick match here, but really like I said, just in, like in the first one, just showcasing the aggression that Noctis can do. With his forward aerial and ground aerial, he has so much reach, not to mention, you know, with his warp attacks. So he is a great character for punishing enemies who are too aggressive or are too far forward. Like just one example was when Sephiroth was attacking Barts. Just in the middle of a simple attack animation, he's able to immediately turn that around and pick up a kill on Sephiroth. So Noctis is a really dangerous character and you have to be very careful about how you approach whenever he's on the enemy team. The fact that this was a pretty small map also definitely benefits Noctis as he's able to just kind of fly around the whole map. There's not a lot of room to run away from him, so he can kind of just take advantage of that and you know keep everybody in check. All right, so in our last match here, we're gonna have a little bit of a longer match so we can see Noctis a little bit more here. Sticking with Hyphen, sticking with the same HP attack, we're gonna have Noctis, Kane, and Golbez on the blue team, and then we're gonna have Noctis, Golbez, and Cloud of Darkness on the red team. So really similar teams here. Once again, our team is gonna sacrifice that Vanguard for a little bit more speed and aggression, so we'll see if that pays off for them. So you see Noctis kind of just running around right here, he doesn't have any long range projectiles. He has kind of some mid-range attacks here, so you don't see him really contributing much in this poking session that happens at the beginning of the game. You see him still just kind of running around, the red team is getting a little closer, so now you see him up dashing around, looking for an opening to actually go in on the red team. Both teams kind of fighting for this middle position here. The Summoning Stone is going to spawn though, Cloud of Darkness is going to catch Noctis as he kind of moves closer towards it. He does attack her, but she shields it. He and Kane are able to kind of double team her though, deal a little bit of damage to her. And he sees Golbez in front of him, he's going to drop his HP attack before Golbez can get away, dealing a little bit of HP damage to him. He's going to get caught by Cloud of Darkness once again, just kind of drop down, taking a little bit of bravery damage, but there's no follow up nearby. You see him moving over, he's got his eyes on Cloud of Darkness, just trying to stay with his team, making sure no one's getting caught out. The three of them are just kind of moving off to the side. It looks like the enemy team's Noctis is chasing down our gold best, so you see our Noctis player try to chase. The enemy Noctis down and threw out a warp strike, but wasn't able to keep up. He's going to move in on Cloud of Darkness, too, who just got hit down below him. Going to follow up and do a little bit of damage, but gets caught out by Golbez. 
He's gonna use his warp to move in on him, misses with the first follow-up attack, but does catch him with an HP attack after dealing a little bit more HP damage to him. Everyone's kind of split up a little bit. You see Cloud of Darkness trying to attack the Summoning Stone here. Noctis is gonna use his warp attack just to kind of knock her away. Now, it looks like the blue team's gonna get their summon off. They're gonna bring out Shiva here. It also looked like all three of the blue members kind of had Cloud of Darkness surrounded, so we'll see if there's any sort of follow-up or um, an attempt to kind of block her into this corner here. Looks like the red team is coming from behind, though, to kind of bail her out. It looks like Kane actually falls here. He's going to be the first death of the game. Noctis is going to be able to get an HP attack off on the red team's Noctis, but the blue team's going to have to be a little careful here while Kane is resurrecting. Looks like he is up again now the red team is on the retreat now that Shiva's attacks are starting to show up on the field. Noctis has his eyes on Golbez right now. He's going to use Enfeeble, dropping him to the ground, and then you see him try to go with that um, warp strike. Golbez is going to teleport away. He's going to catch the red team's Noctis with an attack, though, just kind of knocking him away towards his two blue team members. And you see him still have his eyes on the red team's Golbez. Chasing him down, he does catch him with an attack, um, building up his bravery a little bit. Looks like he and Kane were trying to do like a double team there to get an HP attack off. But Noctis from the red team is going to interrupt that, dealing a lot of HP damage to our Noctis and, and triggering that Armager unique uh, gimmick that Noctis has, which is going to just increase the damage that he deals by a little bit. So he's going to use HP regain on himself here so that they can go ahead and start ticking up. And he's going to try to move back into the fray with his team. Um, you see Kane and Golbez trying to catch up to Noctis, the three of them are now grouped back up again. Now Noctis is going to go in, once again diving into the red team though, gets punished for doing that, but he is able to escape, move kind of off to the side here, back to his teammates. Cloud of Darkness sidestep to the right over here, so you see Noctis kind of move in with his warp attacker and then quickly dodge out of the way of Nightglow from Golbez. So nice awareness there, seeing that target line, knowing that Golbez was about to target him. So now you see he is still kind of chasing down Cloud of Darkness, but now he um, has stopped doing that. Moving over towards the red team's Noctis now, who was trying to attack our Golbez player, but Golbez is actually able to blast him away with Night Glow. Now our Noctis is going to warp around, he's actually going to use his neutral aerial instead of the forward aerial, so not going to have enough reach to attack Golbez and interrupt this summon. So now red team is going to get their summon active here. He is going to use Warp Strike though, actually dealing a ton of damage to Golbez. If he had his Shadow Dragon, he doesn't anymore. So good job there on Noctis to pick up that HP damage. And now with Shiva active for the red team, you see all the blue team members just backing away, not wanting to get caught out by her, and this is such a big map, there's plenty of room to run. Now you see Noctis is kind of going vertical here, just trying to get above everybody. But like he just uses Enfeeble, just trying to slow down the red team as much as he can. And he's kind of moved back in the other direction of the map where there's tons of room to run. Um, his two teammates were not so lucky though, they weren't able to get out of that, so you see Noctis moving back in, trying to get over to Golbez before the red team's able to do anything to him. Looks like our Golbez does go down though, but you see Arcane do a jump on the red team's Golbez, picking up a kill on him and kind of balancing out those two deaths. So Noctis is going to take a little HP damage there from Cloud of Darkness, he's going to fall to the ground here. Now he gets up, kind of moves back over towards his team as much as he can. See him going kind of around the red team, trying to just get back in the middle of his team. And Golbez is going to use HP regain, helping Noctis get his health back up to full. And now it looks like Noctis once again is trying to look for a good opportunity to move in on the red team, as they're all staying grouped up as well, he doesn't want to just go dashing in. Kane actually did that, he got caught out. It's going to allow Noctis to move in, deal a little bit of damage to Golbez, but he does end up getting knocked away by the red team's Noctis. Just a, kind of a touch and go game here at this point. It looks like the red team's Noctis tried to go in a little bit, so our Noctis tried to punish him, but could not quite reach him in time. And now he's going to try to catch Golbez with his HP attack, not going to pick it up. Looks like Kane was able to pick up a kill though on the red team's Noctis. So it's going to tie this game up with about 30 seconds left to go. You see our Noctis trying to move in on Cloud of Darkness, can't quite reach her with his forward aerial. He's going to use his warp to do a quick bravery attack there on Golbez. Warps over to Noctis, has a quick bravery attack on him as well. You see him moving over to Golbez, warping to him and knocking him away again. Building up his bravery up to 3000. Now he's going to warp strike on Golbez, drop all of that HP damage onto him, almost picking up a kill there. He's going to use Enfeeble, which is going to force everyone down to the ground. Tried to get a combo off on the enemy Noctis, but got knocked away. Looks like our Golbez player, though, was able to pick up a Night Glow kill there on the red team's Golbez. So, great way to finish the game off with just a few seconds left on the timer there. Great teamwork there by everybody. Noctis really kind of going off there at the end. And thanks to that big HP attack he was able to get on Golbez seconds before, our Golbez player was able to finish their Golbez player off with a Night Glow. So, really great performance there by our Noctis player. Showcasing at the end there how powerful that warp is. You saw him just kind of warping back and forth between different enemies, doing a lot of damage, building up his bravery, and just really disrupting the red team. This game really shows how big of a force I feel like Noctis is going to be in a lot of matches, whenever he can really start popping off, and if you really know how to work with his tools, 
once you can build up those uh, warp stacks up to three, go ahead and max it out. You have so many options and so much potential to just use your mobility to be such a disrupting factor on the red team. Especially against slower characters or some of the marksman characters that don't have any strong um, you know, melee range attacks that can really force enemies off. Like Golbez or like we saw Terra in that first game. Noctis is really able to just bully those characters whenever he builds up those warp stacks and can just run circles around them. So some great play here by Hyphen. He did use that warp strike attack for all three of these games that we watched. Like I said, Noctis has some really powerful HP attacks in his other ones as well, but they're all relatively similar in the sense that they all have a lot of range because of that warp factor. So this warp strike is a good one to have just like as a general, you know, always useful attack. Some of the others may be more useful depending on your comp or, you know, what type of role you're trying to fill as your HP attack, things like that. But Warp Strike is definitely just a really powerful HP attack in general. So yeah, as far as Noctis goes, like I said, he reminds me a little bit of Titus just in the sense that he has really great mobility. Once those warp stacks start building up, he can really just go in overload and just start warping all around the map and causing so much trouble for the red team, just like Titus does with his dash attacks. So he's one of those characters that fills that kind of disruptor role, but can also deal a ton of damage in short bursts. I know I for one am pretty excited to play him. I feel like he has a really high skill ceiling just with the different options that you have with all of his warping and things like that. So I definitely think he has a lot of potential as a character and I think we'll see a lot of him once the game drops. All right guys, hope this overview of Noctis was useful and you learned a little bit about him. This is the last character I needed to do a commentary for, for the base version of the game. Now we've got one for every single character. So going forward, I'm probably gonna try to highlight different aspects of my gameplay on Fridays instead of doing commentaries until more characters are released. I think next week I'm going to try and do a loss analysis, so I'm going to highlight one of my games where I got completely destroyed in the beta and just kind of talk about why that was and different little things about that game that I could have done better. So I think that might be a fun way to learn a little bit more about the game and maybe explain some of the smaller nuances about um, positioning, movement, things like that. So if you're interested in that, do look forward to my video coming out next week. But yeah, that's about it for this video. Shout out to Hyphen who's the Noctis player I used for uh, my videos here. Definitely give his channel a look if you're interested in more Noctis player or other characters as well. I know he plays a few different assassins. I've got his channel linked down below, so do give a look if you're interested. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.